Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll run through the UK Met Office run have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days as it does look like we're going to be seeing quite an unstable westerly flow into this coming working week and it does look like we will be seeing plenty of showers especially northwards and westwards but not exclusively we'll be drifting further south and eastwards through a number of days and they're going to be extensive showers could be heavy at times and could be the isolated thunderstorm here or there it's not all doom and gloom there is going to be some sunshine around but with cooler upper air conditions coming in from the west it does look like those low 20s are going to be a thing of the past and it does look like high temperatures will be in around that sort of 16 to 18 degree mark maybe slightly higher in a few areas Beyond that though, as we have a look in the GFS, GM, Eastern DF and the ensembles, it does look like high pressure is going to be returning for the end of May and start of June. In what orientation of high pressure, that is going to be making a big, big difference. If it's over the top of the country or just slightly to our east with more of a warmer southerly flow, it could be getting temperatures back into the mid to high 20s. But we are seeing a signal from perhaps quite a few ensemble members and models that it could stay further westwards and northwards still bring us very dry conditions very sunny but would be a chillier north or northeasterly flow holding those temperatures down and especially along the northeast and eastern edge of the country could be quite chilly cloudy and a little bit miserable so very subtle shifts could make a big difference in the longer term we'll have a look at that in detail in the second half of the video just remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description so we start on the live radar you can see uh, a very familiar pattern or at least this will be a very familiar pattern over this coming week big showers in the north and west scattered so some areas seeing some quite heavy showers others just seeing some lighter showers and the further southwards and eastwards you go the better the conditions now we do have a brief bump of warmer air coming up in the southeast today so temperatures are getting up into the mid 20s today but this is going to be the last of any real warmth as it's going to be on a downward down, downhill trend over the next few days but you can see precipitation in the north and west not massively widespread in terms of not it's not raining everywhere all the time but there are Quite a few showers spreading in from Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Northwest England, parts of Wales, and especially in the west and northern parts of Scotland. Now, if we do have a look at those temperatures, as of around 3 p.m., so we're reaching the peak temperatures of the day, you can see these oranges down in the south and the east. Temperatures get and getting up into the low to mid 20s. Wouldn't be surprised by this evening. We'll see a post by the Met Office saying we've got 25, 26 degrees possible in this area uh, around London into the East Anglia area as well. Further northwards and westwards with those westerly winds coming in, it's chillier but not massively cold. Temperatures back into the mid-teens and that's going to be conditions taking over for all. Uh, you can see in the near constant still quite warm getting into those high 20s um, into mid-30s potentially as well but the heat is subsiding a little bit. So we do now run through the UK Met Office run, see the precipitation and temperature over the next five days. Now you can see, as of this afternoon as I'm recording this video, pretty dry in the south and the east. More precipitation further northwards and westwards, and it's going to spread further inland overnight tonight, before dissipating a little bit um, through the early hours of the morning. By tomorrow afternoon, we're starting to see that precipitation push further east as well, potentially a bit of a persistent band in the southeast. Um, not massively heavy, you can see just a little bit of blues and a few greens mixing in there. So it's going to be light to moderate rain, but it'll still be quite miserable there. And you can see in the west and the north, plenty of showers. And those temperatures are going to be dropping quite significantly as well. That precipitation does move through, peps up a little bit through the evening on Monday, but does eventually move through. And by Tuesday afternoon, into sunshine and showers. Quite heavy showers potentially there. Some yellows and reds mixing in. Maybe some torrential rain, maybe some thundery showers, but nothing too crazy. As we head into Wednesday, you see a persistent band of precipitation moves in, moves through. So by sort of um, rush hour, most of that precipitation or the persistent preci precipitation should move through. And then we just get battered by quite a few scattered showers, especially in the north and west, but not exclusively through the Midlands into central southern England. We've seen quite a few breakouts. And through the afternoon, around lunchtime, we could see some heavy thundery showers break out, some reds mixing in there once again. As we head into Thursday, you can see more persistent rain, especially in the west um, through Thursday. So the far southeast will be cloudy, but be a drier day. And behind that, you can see there is quite a bit of precipitation. 
persistent precipitation across the Midlands into Wales and Northern England, and then quite a few heavier showers behind that, behind that. So you can see a lot of precipitation. The bulk of the precipitation most days will be in the north and the west, but you can see at least through Monday to Wednesday, it does look like there will be quite a few showers and that persistent band on Monday, perhaps in the southeast as well. So, yes, predominant precipitation, most likely chance of seeing a lot of precipitations in the north and west, but it's not exclusive. We are going to be seeing quite a bit of rain in the south and the east as well. Now, if we do have a look at those temperatures over the next five days, you can see this afternoon temperatures rising up into the low to mid-20s, 22, 23 degrees, more likely 24, 25 degrees in a few isolated areas. But by tomorrow, with that precipitation moving into the far southeast, we'll be lucky to get 16 to 18 degrees. And under precipitation and cloud, more likely 13 or 14 degrees. Much, much cooler. It's going to be remarkably cooler out there. You're really going to feel it. Perhaps might need a jacket or a coat tomorrow and if it's rain around or raincoat as well for tuesday afternoon temperatures recovering a little bit as you see a little bit more dry conditions it's more it's more of a showery regime 16 to 18 degrees more widely but for else elsewhere for north and westwards more likely 14 15 degrees and very similar to wednesday could see the ice dated 18 19 in the far southeast but widely sort of 15 to 17 degrees and again through Tuesday, maybe 17, 18 degrees along the south coast, but more widely sort of 13 to 15 degrees. Much chillier conditions this week. Not cold by any means. It's still going to be reasonable around average, maybe slightly below average or above average, depending on the exact positioning in the country. But it's not going to be any warmer conditions like we've had recently. Yes, we've had a lot of thunderstorms recently, but temperatures have generally over the last week or two been above average. Um, and it does look like it's going to be dipping towards average, if not maybe below average for some over the next five days. Now, if we do have a look at the longer range, if we do start on the GFS run, you can see why we're going to be seeing a lot of showers coming in. That high pressure to our south and our east is reducing intensity, and we're going to see a westerly flow. You can see we go into the greens through Monday and Tuesday, and that is lower pressure. Yes, not vigorous low pressure systems, that's why we're not seeing massive um, significant rain from big weather fronts by any means, but we are seeing a lot of showers. And that is going to continue low pressure running in off the Atlantic. And you can see why it's more likely to be dry in the south and east, closer to higher pressure, but not under high pressure influence. Beyond that, as we head into the weekend, you see high pressure is building back up from the south. So this is this high pressure trend we are getting towards next weekend. High pressure definitely does build in. All the models and ensemble members have high pressure building in, but it's in what capacity? How far eastwards does it get? Because on this run, this GFS run, by next weekend, yes, we're under higher pressure. Warmer air masses are trying to push in, but we actually go into a chillier northerly airflow with that high pressure pushing further northwards and westwards and this would be a little bit unsettled perhaps quite showery yes there would be more drier conditions around for a time but with these little low pressure systems mixing in it could go a little bit more unsettled and then right in the longer term we actually do see high pressure firmly build up from the south turning things much much warmer now if we do look at those upper air conditions to see uh, what sort of air masses we're going to be in you can see warm just towards our south and east at the moment, but much chillier air masses coming in from the west this week, perhaps getting down to zero degrees at 850 HPA. But towards next weekend, you see that warmer air just to our south and our west, but not quite pushing in. You see cooler air coming in from the north is pushing in. And right towards the end of the run, we do see some warmth pushing in. As I said, with that higher pressure, very warm conditions actually, perhaps. And you can see the upper air temperature deviation is very, very hot. But it is right towards the end of the run. Big uncertainty with that. Um, but the only certainty we do have unsettled and westerly over the next five days. And then it is turning much drier. Temperatures, though, with that drier high pressure is still very much up in the air. Now, if you do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare over the next 10 days. You can see low pressure pushing in, westerly flow. As we head towards next weekend, high pressure building in. Yes, a bit of a northerly flow, but that high pressure is stretched a tad more southwards and eastwards, so perhaps cutting off the chilliest air. But right towards the end of the run, we do start to pull in more of a northerly flow, but never get any of those little greens in, which is ch uh, chillier and more unsettled air masses. Now, if we do run it back and have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can see cooler over the next week or so. Um, and then as we head into the weekend with high pressure building in, you can see, yes, chillier air masses down the far east coast. But we are seeing some warmer air masses try and push in from the south and west. If we did see this scenario, the best weather would actually be further westwards under 
more more, more towards the centre of the high pressure system. Further east, which we can be seeing a big temperature contrast, maybe only 10, 12 degrees along the east coast with cool, low cloud pushing in some drizzle. Further westwards across the West Midlands into Wales, southwest England into Ireland, it could be 20 degrees under higher pressure. Even though the air mass might not be massively warm with more stagnant air with the sunshine out, it could feel pretty decent. So yeah, it all does depend on the orientation of this high pressure. And if we do have a look at the East CMDF, see how that does compare. Again, low pressure running in over the next week or so, then high pressure building back in. But yes, the East CMDF has a bit of an easterly flow, uh, northeastly flow, sorry, but it's not massively strong, and there's not that much cool upper air conditions, more under the centre of the high. So if you run it back in again, have a look at the upper air temperatures, see how it does compare. Again, low pressure moving in over the next few days, chillier conditions for warm high pressure builds in for next weekend, and yes, some cooler air in the far southeast, but that warm air is never too far away. Um, so some areas in the west could be still quite warm. Thing is with this is it's just small pockets of unstable, chillier air coming in from the north and the northeast, up from Scandinavia, from the North Sea, but it is so difficult to forecast beyond sort of five days where these pockets of cooler air are going to be. And that's why we're seeing from these three different scenarios, all kind of showing that northeasterly wind, but showing different um, sort of sizes in these cooler unstable air masses uh, and different positioning of the higher pressure. As we see with the ensembles, there is a lot of disagreement um, with the exact upper air conditions. And if we do start on the GFS ensembles, you can see they're definitely more on the cooler trend. You see, warm at the moment, but that's just for the next sort of 12 to 24 hours before we dip below average for the start of this coming week. Then we would start to return towards average. And then as we head towards next weekend, we do start to see high pressure building. You can see that with the precipitation signal, very minimal, um, all the way to the start of June, picking up a little bit towards the start of June, but that's just uncertainty within the ensembles. But you can see the upper air temperatures are generally around or below average, so definitely the GFS ensembles are trending today towards more of that north to northeasterly flow. Um, in terms of um, upper air conditions, bringing cooler air masses, um, and in the longer term, still a lot of uncertainty. So very, very interesting seeing that from the GFS here. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see again, those temperatures are diminishing a bit. Some on some members still getting to the 20s, but quite a few are in that around that sort of 16, 17, 18 degree mark. Yes, it would be drier through the last sort of period of May and start of June. So it will feel better than this coming week, even though the temperatures on the thermometer might be very similar. It will feel better with more sunshine around and dry conditions, but it's not going to be that warm on this latest run. Still, as I said, a lot of time to change that high pressure. All it has to do is shift further eastwards, that blocking not to get far northwards, and we would be in a warmer air mass. But if we have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see there's quite a lot of certainty with high pressure coming in for the end of May. All on summer members are above 1,020 millibars, all into that high pressure range. Some dropping a little bit through the start of June, and I think that's just because of the little trough coming in from the northeast that we were seeing on some of the runs um, for the London area. But we're still generally under higher pressure with the majority of the runs still in that sort of high pressure sector around that 1,020 to 1,030 millibars. Now, if we do finish the video by just having a look at the ESIMWF ensembles for the midnight run, you can see they are slightly warmer, perhaps, in the longer term. Warm at the moment, then chilly over the next few days, but as we head towards next weekend, around Friday, Friday Saturday time, we actually trend slightly above average and stay around or above average, maybe slightly below for the start of June, but just a little bit warmer than the GFS ensemble. So more of these ensemble members having warmer air masses in, that high pressure not quite giving as much of a northeasterly flow, very dry still through the end of May and start of June. Yes, a bit of uncertainty, especially in the east down towards London, because if we do see that unstable northeasterly cooler flow come in, there will be a few sort of lighter showers, but nothing too significant. That's why we're still seeing a bit of precipitation there. But there is massive uncertainty with the air masses, not the pressure pattern, the air masses is going to be the big thing. So we'll have to keep an eye on it over the next couple of weeks. But for the end of May, start of June, it does look like it's going to be very dry, potentially warm, but 
if we don't see those warmer air masses coming up from the south, it could be more towards average, maybe slightly below average, depending on the exact positioning in the country. We could see a scenario where it's below average in the east and above average in the west. Low 20s in the west towards low to mid-teens in the east. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. We won't really have uh, any concrete idea of those surface temperatures for at least uh, maybe a couple days, uh, but I'll keep you updated. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.